What's up guys, I'm Zach and welcome back to Workshop Edits. In today's project, I wanna take you through how I built this modern farmhouse table and matching bench. Now the entire table is built out of white oak and it has a Rubio mono coat finish in walnut. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, it is a beautiful day to be in the shop, about 55 degrees, which is actually pretty cold for Southern California. I've got all the material I need, so that's five quarter white oak, which is gonna make up the different components of the tabletop, the bench top, and the stretchers. I also have some 12 quarter uh, white oak, which is incredibly heavy. That's gonna make up the table legs, the bench legs. So what I'm gonna do is first spend some time just looking at all of the five quarter pieces, decide which ones are gonna be the table and bench top, and mark those out, and then we're just gonna go through the process of jointing and planing and breaking things down at the miter saw and just getting all these pieces to their rough dimension so that we can get to assembling this thing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, it's Zach from the future. I wanted to just quickly talk about this series of cuts that you just saw me doing because you'll notice that I'm not using a riving knife. So shortly before this project, I purchased this new table saw blade, which is from Freud. It is a combination blade and it is a thin kerfing blade. So what I didn't know was that when you're using a thin kerfing blade, you have to adjust your riving knife. What I noticed was that because I hadn't adjusted it, I was getting a lot of binding with uh, some of the bigger pieces of wood. And it's not that I needed a thin kerfing blade, which I actually went out and purchased, then realized I didn't need it. It's just that the riving knife itself needs to be adjusted. So the way that it's supposed to be adjusted is that this riving knife, uh, if you're making cuts with you know, the fence to the right of you and you're pushing the wood through, the left side of the riving knife needs to be exactly uh, coplanar with the outside of the blade. Then on the right side, so the side that is facing the fence, that just needs to be slightly on the inside of the blade. All right, back to the build. All right, so it's been about two and a half hours. I just finished breaking down all the material. Nothing is cut to its final length, but uh, everything is you know, jointed, planed, all to the same thickness and has straight edges. So it's ready uh, to begin assembly. So we have tabletop, bench top, stretchers, and then all of the leg pieces, which you saw me milling from that 12 quarter white oak, which was pretty much uh, not only the heaviest thing I've ever used, but it completely maxed out the capacity on the table saw. What I'm gonna do is first lay out this tabletop get it going, glued up and assembled. I'm gonna use biscuits to keep everything lined up. I'm gonna do the same thing with the bench top. Then we're gonna start 
by cutting all of these various components to their final lengths and get the initial uh, leg pieces assembled like I did on my previous farmhouse build. Okay, so we have the tabletop and the bench top fully glued up and assembled. You saw I used biscuits there and I like to just stand on top of my glue up when I'm doing it. It helps me just keep things flat as I tighten things. So nothing bows, I just that's my personal anecdotal tip. You don't have to use that. Now what I wanna do is turn our attention to the legs for the table and for the bench. So what we're gonna do is cut everything to length over at the table saw using the table saw sled and you know, stop block just to make sure each of the legs are the exact same. Then we're just gonna do an initial assembly of them with glue. Tomorrow, we're gonna come back and reinforce everything with screws and use some dowels to hide those and then cut our structures to final length and kind of bring everything together before we get into the final finishing of things. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, we're on to day two of this project, so everything has been sitting overnight. So we're gonna start by popping everything out of the clamps. We're gonna work on bringing the legs of the benches and the table together. Then we're gonna turn our attention to doing a bunch of finishing work on the top of the table. All right, so the bases of the table and the bench are now assembled. I've got the table behind me, you can see popped out of the clamps. I've got it flipped upside down. What I'm gonna do is some kind of like general cleanup on it, get rid of excess glue, do just a little bit of sanding. Then this is really flat. This is actually one of the flattest glue ups I've ever had. But what I wanna do is because it's hardwood, I'm going to add some C channel, some steel C channel to the bottom of it. So I'm gonna route out just a little groove that goes all the way across cut that C channel to length and then pop it in there with uh, some screws. And by doing that, that's just gonna prevent any flex over time with the changing of weathers or being in a different environment. It's cold right now, I assembled it when it's cold. If it gets a lot warmer and there's wood expansion, I want this thing just to stay as flat as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, that's a lot of sanding. So I've taken both the bench top and the table top from 80 grit belt sander, 120 and 180 grit on the orbital sander, and 220 grit with some hand sanding. I also cut to final length, both of them, and then I added a chamfer on the top and bottom of each. I think it just um, ends up looking really nice. It's, it's nice on your arms as you sit at the table, and it's good for, you know, so you don't bump your knees or your, your arms when you're eating. So what I do do now is turn my attention to 
the base of the table and the legs. So what I'm gonna do is reinforce all of the joints with some hidden screws and then plug them with dowels. Then we're gonna sand everything down. Again, I'll probably just start with 120 uh, and then do 220 hand sanding. And then these pieces are going to be ready for finish. So let's do it. All right, so everything has been sanded to 220. All the dowels that are hiding the screws have been flushed up. Next thing I wanna do is move on to finishing. So for this project, I'm using Rubio Mono Coat in Walnut. This is above and beyond my favorite finish. It goes on super easily. You only have to do one coat, hence the Mono Coat part of the product. It looks great. It leaves a really clean, smooth finish to the touch. It's really protective. I love using it on furniture and yeah, recommend it if you haven't used it before. Not gonna go into a whole lot of detail on how to apply this finish. Uh, if you are interested in using it, I'll put a link to a video from The Wood Whisperer who does a great explanation for how to put it on. I'm gonna start by doing the two tops. So that would be the top of the table and the top of the bench. And then I'm gonna move on to doing the base. All right, so we just finished the tabletop and the bench top. It takes seven days for this finish to cure using the accelerant. So factor that into your projects, do some finishing, set it aside and move on to the next part of it if you can. Before we get to finishing the base for this, what I wanna do is drill out the holes for the hardware. So we're gonna be using screws and threaded inserts to bring everything together. So in order for those screws to work properly, we're gonna drill out some large recessed holes in the underside of each of these, just using like an inch Forstner bit we're gonna drill those, then drill pilot holes, then finish the piece, and when it's done, we will be able to then go back, mark out the same holes on the underside of both the bench and the tabletop, drill in and insert those threaded inserts, and then bring everything together, and we're gonna be finished. All right, that is gonna wrap it up for this build. I am super happy with how this table came out. I think the white oak with the walnut Rubio mono coat just has a really cool, unique look to it. If you guys enjoyed the video, just let me know by hitting that like button. Would love it if you would subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time on whatever it is that I'm building. Bye.